my dear people of uh, Southern Cameroons, great warriors of our revolution, accept revolutionary greetings from me, John Bakuro. Today is Sunday, February 7, 2021. I'm delighted to be here and to share the message I bring today with all and sundry. We'll be talking somehow about uh, what is happening on the ground with respect to this lie they've always called Youth Day. And uh, I want all of us to take note that all of these lies are coming because the cost of occupation is growing and growing seriously and growing by the day. So, fellow people, I want to hail and congratulate each and every one of us because we continue to put in as much as we can in terms of effort and the struggle to ensure that we get to you know the finish line and so today i'd like us to take a very close look at some of the decisions that are being made in the republic du cameroon <laughs> i like to laugh because we just see them and then sometimes we just swallow the excuses that they give but we don't take time to try to make a critical analysis and to see the hypocrisies involved so that we grow to know exactly why they take these decisions so that we know that we are on the right track so that we know that we're on a good footing. A few months back, they bragged, they made a noise that Pamol was, you know, restarting, Pamol Indian, that was restarting and it was taking off full scale and they're putting a lot of money and putting a lot of security. But we're all witnesses now. I'm just some exchanging just at the start of this communication. I had an exchange with a number of people in Lobe who told me that operations have completely come to a halt. Yet they continue to not only say these lies, but even believe in them by claiming that normalization is taking place. Simply because they don't want to let the world know that their entire edifice, that edifice meant to keep Southern Cameroonians in bondage forever, is crumbling and is crumbling very fast. My dear people, look, the decision taken by the Minister I think, of Youth Affairs and others to cancel, or rather he said he was relaying a decision from very high quarters from their head of state, Octogenarian Paul Beer, that festivities marking the 55th celebration of Youth Day, or the lie they call Youth Day, on February 11, are cancelled. Cancelled because of COVID-19. Because they have to observe, you know, the prevention protocols, and so they're going to do a virtual event where everybody will be socially distant even in some of the rooms where they'll have to sit and do some of those virtual things. My people, you all know as well as I do, that in 2020, when the Republic announced that they were canceling the May 20 celebrations, they were at the same time announcing that classes were resuming. That people who are going to some of those schools, i like anyone to tell me how socially distant the people are. How many children are in each class? Have the numbers reduced? Because of the best of my knowledge, classrooms which are supposed to take 30, 40 people end up with 80 pupils, students in those classes. But they are there, rubbing their bodies and everything and all whatnot. The markets are fully open. Nightclubs are open. Every other thing in that country, life has returned to normal regarding the COVID restrictions. But the only things that they, that they will use to announce that uh, those are the reasons they are canceling some of those things and it's because of COVID, are those official events which will require them to do two things. One, either spend money, or number two, that they will require Mr. Paul Bia to come out to the public so the people see him, see how he is, take a pause, so people notice exactly what is happening with him. Those are the things. That is why May 20 was cancelled, number one, because they couldn't muster the huge hundreds of millions or even billions that would have been required to do these things. Yet when they cancelled, they didn't cancel. They didn't withdraw 
<clears throat> the budget, I beg your pardon, set aside for, you know, a party at the Unity Palace. That money was effectively spent. What for? No one, no one knows. It's the same thing like this. This February 11th has been cancelled because they don't have the financial resources to send the kind of security operations that they require across southern Cameroons and to pay for the hiring of people that they will have to take truckloads of people from the Republic of Cameroon into our territory to, to do what they, what they always do, what I call make-believe. It is because of that that they cancelled. But again, do you know what is happening? Even after it has been cancelled, <laughs> Preparations at the levels of the divisional officers and senior divisional officers are going on normally as if nothing has happened. You know why? Because these administrators, they have 11 February, May 20, budgeted as a period where they have to get for themselves new cars, periods where they may have to marry new wives or create more side chicks, periods where they have to buy, to, you know, buy more land or build new houses from the money. That they manage from this because they have to extort from all other civil servants in the administrative units. Even as we are talking, the SGOs are busy. I'm twisting civil servants, uh, divisional delegates, subdivisional delegates, service heads, and you know, and then they will even categorize anyone up to category A1 and all not must contribute this amount. And the least of all of those will be 10,000 francs. You contribute that and give to the, to, the, to, to the SDO. Whatever he does with it, don't ask. Even after it has been cancelled, these contributions are ongoing. And they come with threats. If you don't contribute, mind you, if you are a vote holder, the divisional officer or senior divisional officer will not sign any paper for you, mission orders and all or not, that will enable you to get your dues. That is the kind of country that we are working in. But that is not even my concern. Our main concern here is that the cost of occupation is growing exponentially by the day. That is why they cannot do some of these things again. They are becoming a luxury. Because the central administration cannot have money again enough to disburse for some of these things. You'll be shocked the amounts of money that people from regional treasuries have to go to the central services to require assistance to pay especially in the southern Cameroons. This tells you, my people, that the Republic of Cameroon is feeling the pinch, feeling that pinch big time. I mean, big time. So, my people, we have to continue to be determined. The last time that I sat at this place and held a, a, a conversation with you folks, I pointed this out. That big because the impact of what we are doing is growing seriously. La Republic of Cameroon is going to resort to the only thing they know how to do best. That is sowing seeds of discord and division among us. You can see for yourselves. You can see for yourselves. I'm sure you notice that social media is awash with audios and counter audios flying here and there with messages of blackmail and counter blackmail flying here and there and all what not. Because of one thing, they have recognized that we are a kind of people who like to share, 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 share. And on that, Aristotle has a message for us. Aristotle says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So if you are excellent, Generally, whatever you do, you, you will do in the right direction. But if you are that kind of person who is complacent, that kind of person who easily falls to conspiracy theories, that kind of person who easily believes things without analyzing them critically, trust me, you will generally fall to this. That is why you will not easily ask yourself, but a tournament just went on called Shan, where they were perfectly humiliated beginning from from, uh, from Victoria, 4-0, and then they carried the, you know, the, you know, they carried the stigma down to Douala and swallowed another 2-0. You will not ask yourself questions. That how can you be canceling February 11 celebrations while at the same time hosting an international football tournament? We saw people at the 
uh, Japoma Stadium, at the Reunification Stadium in Douala, at the stadium in, in at the stadiums in the stadium in Yaoundé, not socially distant. In some places, they said yes when it was official tribute, but the main tribunes, you saw people seated as usual, cramped as usual. Yet they tell you it is because of COVID-19. No, 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 no. That is a lie, a huge lie. I want to take us back to some very important things, my people. When you hear voices begin to rise again from everywhere to repeat and to reiterate that we need to collaborate, we need to bunch together, we need to work together, it is because more and more those who felt that they could spite others, they could grind everyone and do it by themselves, are beginning to realize that even the projects that they hold so dear to their minds will not take off unless we all work together. In whose interest is it when we refuse to work together? Your guess is as good as mine. In whose interest is it when we work together? Of course, the answer is obvious. It is in our interest. So, my dear people, let us put our heads together. Let us work together. Let us do everything to encourage all those on the front lines, to encourage all those who come out on social media, that they should all go out there and preach and practice collaboration, working together. We will only tap the benefits from the renewed international pressure on La Republic du Cameroon if we begin to work together. That is why, why that pressure is piling on Yaoundé. Yaoundé is doing everything to sponsor their internal agents to make sure we don't talk as one people, to make sure we tear ourselves together, to make sure even little groups that were already bonded together start getting shattered once more. My dear people, we must be wise. Refuse to let your hand be the hand through which some of these things pass. I know that when I say some of these things, there are some who come here on this platform and throw insults on me. You are this, Bakuro, you are that. Some say you have the coalition for surrender. Some say you are a federalist. Some say you are even a unionist. Some even outrightly say you are an agent of La Republic du Cameroon. And then I smile. I laugh. I continue doing exactly what I'm doing because of the conviction I have that what I'm doing is the right thing. That the message I'm bringing is the right message. That's why Eleanor Roosevelt says, do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. So whether I do this, whether I keep talking about the need for us to ignore these agents of internal division, to ignore these sponsored agents who try to rip us apart and do everything to talk as one people and to collaborate because that is how we shall shorten our journey, I'll be criticized. Whether I do it or I don't do it, I'll be criticized. So I better continue doing it. And I better continue urging you to do it. Continue. You who are doing this, you who are calling people, trying to conscientize our people to understand the need to work together, continue to, to do it. You need to know what is happening on the other side. The pressure is building. And I saw Mr. Adolf Lili Lafrique de Ben Chofo in Bamenda go to Ngarbu this February, because in exactly um, eight days, in exactly eight days, it will be 14 February, the day 21 people, including children and a pregnant woman, were brutally cut off the earth by this regime, by that colonial regime. And he goes there and says, the head of state has said that they should do what? Just listen to him. I'll come back. I have given five million for each house, each house that we have destroyed. I have given five million for each house, each house that we have destroyed. I have given five million for each house, each house that we have destroyed. I have given five million for each house, each house that we have destroyed. I have. I just decided to let us listen to that over and over because it was very short. It was just about six to eight seconds. So 
started to listen so that if you didn't get it well, you get it the second time, the third time, or at least the fourth time. Now, after listening to this, he says, the head of state has said they will give five million. I'm not bothered about his English because I know he's, uh, you know, he English is not his first language and he has never been interested in learning that English language. So I will not equate him to a Tanganji. Perhaps let me not get into voices uh, in the bushes and, uh, you know, the bereaved uh, being buried. What I want to say is, just look at the callousness. After they refused, after they pretended and insisted that they were not responsible for what happened in Garbo, what have they done finally? They turn around one year after and come and say the head of state has said they will give 5 million CFA for each house that was destroyed in the place, especially because they are continuing the destruction, because they have been planning to build a military base in that area. My people, the lives of those 21 people, is it worth 5 million each? They are not repentant. They are continuing in the same direction to do exactly what they know is distasteful to our people. And then they come. This is what you call the, the stick and carrot approach. They torture you, destroy, shatter everything and all. Then they turn around and come and tell you, okay, I will take care of whatever I've destroyed. I'll take care of you. And they consider that to be enough. And some people come and tell us, okay, let's just close our eyes and let it, let it be this way. No, we have to continue to be resilient. My dear people of the Southern Cameroons, the civil society, we have to continue by peaceful means to be resilient. This is a clear message. Of course, you have all seen the report from Human Rights Watch concerning what happened in Mautu. It's unequivocal. I mean, unequivocal. They made clear the Cameroon government is responsible for what happened in Mautu. And I've been struggling as much as possible to go after the witnesses to see how they should stifle truth. But it hasn't worked. Listen, there definitely will be a time for reckoning. I call on all and sundry. Let us all become hustlers. Hustlers of victory. Hustlers of freedom. Hustlers of freedom. Let us hustle. Let us do everything. Don't sit in your corner and tell yourself that I'm just sitting. Others will work and I'll get there. And by the way, I'll get my own piece of amber anywhere when the victory comes. No. Abraham Lincoln says, Things may come to those who wait, but only things left by those who hustle. Listen, this may be too technical for you to understand. Your children, your children's children and generations of Southern Cameroonians will be searching through the history books to see what their family people did, to see what their father, their mother, their uncle, their auntie or whatever did. To secure freedom for Southern Cameroons, will your name be, be seen? When they'll be making the roll call, will they hear your name? This is why I say don't just sit down. Let us all participate in one way or the other. There are many things we can do. Like, what of joining the consortium teams on the ground when they go about to sensitize the people? To also go around, add your voice to let the people see the importance of us staying resilient. Keeping the Monday ghost towns holy. My dear people, let's not be derailed. Let's keep our focus on the goal. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. And that prize is Boya. That is where we should keep our eyes. That should be where we should keep our focus. That should be where we should maintain our view. And for those of you who appear to think, even dream, that some form of association with the Republic of Cameroon can help. <laughs> you definitely are dreaming. I'm sure you have all seen Nambere's video circulating on almost every forum. For the sake of those who haven't had the opportunity to watch it, I'm going to play that short clip here. It's about two minutes. But I'll take that time to play it. Listen. It tells you that in the minds of the Republic of Cameroon before we have always been slaves. And it tells you that if this struggle were to end where it is, oh my goodness, not a single one of us 
will be spared. The stigma is going to be on everybody. You will listen to him carefully and hear what he says. Although he speaks in pidgin, but I trust that all of us will be able to understand it. And it follows from what a citizen of La Republic du Cameroon, calling on Afrique Media while I was participating on the program from Côte d'Ivoire, said. He said in French, and I repeat, Tous les anglophones sont des hypocrites. Listen, mark the word to all. He said it all. Tous les anglophones sont les hypocrites. That tells you the mind frame that they have about us. So no matter the level of gesticulation, no matter the degree of praise singing that you give to them, like Ashunyenti, no matter whatever you do, sorry, you waste your time. You attacked. You attacked. You are seen in the same fashion. So don't even bother turning against your own brothers, against your own sisters, thinking that you'll be considered. No, everybody is in the basket. They'll put all of us in the same basket. That's exactly what they are doing. Now, anyway, just listen to Nambere. It's a simple thing. No, go out the name, pal. Yes, you name me vase. Voilà. Ajudant chef major Mevazé, euh, Brigade euh, Bona, Banco Moda, mais c'est Peloton routier motorisé pour Banco Moda. Non, il est au euh, centre Janande, il faut plus Janande vos 5D. Il yeah, faut 7, non, ben, il y a des Voilà, il y a des commandants pour les routiers. routiers. Yes. You can imagine, c'est dit, man, tu as mis, c'est. Il y a une moto, il y a une moto de Wolf au Gassement. Il y a beaucoup. 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 Vous avez kidnappé son mot, son plaît de moto rangoudi. Ok, des motos n'ont pas de bouc. Il y a ici des motos qui ont de bouc. Vous avez moto, il problème qui est à vous do with Amin de Rondai ou ça de anglophone. Tell me, c'est vide, c'est il hot me plenty, mon go back au bush, go fight, so we talk so one fight, one wall, the wrong commander. Il n'y a qu'à regret, moi, j'ai ma weapon, ma chambre, même ma yé. And it doesn't go many the disciplined people. Because if they are only the gendarme people, they may tell all of them go back au bush. Or they think Kiwi, they may Kiwi. If they were only the uniform people, then well, they, never, they get a respect is a super car. Anybody get right to respect a brother. We won't drop down a weapon who like our country, who love our country, who die for the country, who walk back for the country, me peace calm. Any gendarme, any uniform policeman, any man, you get right to give you the maximum respect. We will deserve them. If we do respect our My people, you just listened there to Nambere. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a bit cut off. You just listened there to Nambere talk. And I'm sure uh, you're asking yourself, oh, wait a minute, is this the same Nambere who a few days ago was bulging out or what not? These are signs of the times. This is a message, a clear message to each and every one of us. When you, co you continue to think that because I am doing this with them, I'm doing that with them. It first of all happened to Franklin Jume. We all saw uh, Nkongo success, crying profusely. If gold can rot, what will happen to silver? We saw him cry because of what happened to Franklin Jume. They don't discriminate. No. They bunch everyone together. So be you Elvis Ngole Ngole. Be you Kalistus Food Gentry, be you Atanga Ponji, whosoever you are, I bet you, be you Fru Jonathan Majingi, whoever, trust me, you will not be spared. You will not have a different consideration. They will not have a different mindset about you. No. As long as you're a Southern Cameroonian, it's the same thing. In their minds, you are not fully human. You're only half human. So let me share with each and every one of us here what Benjamin Hardy says about these people who still continue cooperating with the oppressor and thinking that they are carving for themselves a niche. No, you are not. He says unsuccessful people make their decisions based on their current situations. Successful people make their decisions based on where they want to be. Take note. So if you are looking at the current situation where you have some sinecure advantages, where you have some crumbs falling from the table for you, that's why you come and tell us that 
their head of state does not say popo. His word is not popo. Yeah. Because you happen to see some few crumbs coming by you, because they make you some few lousy promises, because they give you some power which is empty and put other people under you who wield the real power, you have the feeling that you're getting to something. No. You are judging based on the current circumstances, not based on where you want to be. I, Bayakuru, along with too many other Southern Cameroonians, millions of us, we have made our decisions based on where we want to be. And where we want to be is in a free Southern Cameroons. In a free Southern Cameroons, where democracy would thrive, where the respect for human rights would be the norm, would be the order of the day, and not an exception. A free Southern Cameroons, where the local communities would determine their own development priorities, where everyone will have the opportunity to aspire to any position in the country without necessarily having to know anyone in higher positions or without necessarily having to belong to a dynasty, a Southern Cameroons, where creativity would be the order of the day, where we will not base our minds on importing all, all finished goods, anything that we need from elsewhere, a Southern Cameroons, where the educational system will be such that produces job creators and not job seekers. That is where we want to be. That is where the successful Southern Cameroonians want to be. And that is where I want to be. That is where I wish that you also think of being. Not being part of a system where those ruling it are what they call in French more vivant. If you want to doubt it, just take a look again at this lastly before we go. Unfortunately, this video is going to be playing sideways, so you may have to turn your phone or turn whatever device you are watching on so you can watch it well. It's unfortunate on other uh, on other platforms it, play, it, it plays better, but in this specific software, it doesn't. So, uh, have some fun with Nyat Jifenji Maxell. of the Senate of La République du Cameroon. The number second personality, that is the one who will take over. If Mr. Paul Bia were to resign today, what is not possible? If something were to happen to Mr. Paul Bia today, or they were to announce vacancy, that is the man who has to take, who has to take over next. You see, if standing there, he can't even move a single step. And you know what? I know you have seen the pictures flowing ev ev uh, everywhere, how he was virtually supported to that place. That is not the kind of place to belong. No, no, that is not the kind of place to belong. Mm -mm. I remember Otto Marcelin, an artist in that country, saying one day that after 70, he said, At 70 ans, on n'a plus de sentiment, on n'a plus de testament. Plus de sentiment, de testament. That is why things are happening there the way they are happening. And this is the kind of system we want to depart from. This is a kind of system Southern Cameroonians are not used to. This is a kind of system Southern Cameroonians have rejected and rejected overwhelmingly. My dear people, let us, beginning from this day, determine to do right. Stop forwarding things you have not listened to. Stop forwarding things that are divisive. Stop being part of the division and the confusion. Begin being part of the movement 
for togetherness and collaboration. This is how we will win. And this is how we will shorten our journey to Boya. To God be all the glory.